I know a lot of you have been interested in my journey of learning the Lithuanian language, so here's another update on my progress. I believe when I made my last video on this topic, I was wrapping up a series of private one-on-one -on -one remote lessons with Antanas of Talk Like Antanas. I initially prepaid for a package of five lessons, and after that, we had one follow-up lesson where I asked that we look at conjugating verbs in the past tense. So maybe I can start by reviewing that whole experience. All in all, I can say that I learned a fair bit from my one-on-one -on -one sessions. The way in which Antanas works is using an online spreadsheet that we go through row by row, while simultaneously talking over a video call. It's visual, interactive, and you're essentially taking notes in the spreadsheet as you go along, leaving a good record of what you've learned. I definitely feel like these are the strengths of Antanas' method. What I struggled with was the pace, which felt too fast for me. I could probably have spoken up about this, but maybe I was just too shy to do that. It's worse when you realize that each hour-long session is an academic hour, which I've since learned isn't an actual, real-world, 60-minute long hour. Apparently, an academic hour is 45 minutes, which I find strange enough. Seeing as it's 25% shorter than a full hour, it just means that there's less time to learn and practice things and more pressure to get through things. At least that's what I perceive. Nonetheless, I'm quite satisfied with my experience with Antanas, and very, very grateful that he took the time to even appear on my YouTube videos to offer some commentary. I am well aware that my shortcomings in learning the language are due to my own decisions and I definitely will receive from the tutoring what I put into it. And since I wasn't the most proactive with homework and reviewing outside of the sessions, I can't complain about any lack of progress. Oh, and I have to share one funny and stupid moment with you that happened during these lessons. So I had to translate a sentence that included Ash Pamir Shaw. And even though I knew that I had heard this word before, I just couldn't remember it. So that's exactly what I told Antanas, saying something like, I think I know this word, but I don't know. I, I've forgotten what it means. And of course, Ash Pamir Shaw means I forgot. But on that note, a lack of internal motivation has been the biggest challenge and something that Antanas confirms should never be relied upon. I mean, I'm still determined to find some motivation to make this humongous task easier. But yeah, with my job and other big life events, learning Lithuanian continues to fall closer to the bottom of the list. While it's not exactly a positive and inspirational form of motivation, Lithuania's plan to require self-employed foreigners to know Lithuanian will be one external force pushing me to learn faster. Because in March, LRT reported that amendments to the law on the state language were making their way through the Lithuanian parliament that would force those who don't work under an employment contract to speak Lithuanian. While a focus was for self-employed gig economy workers, such as bolt drivers, it sounds like it will apply to all self-employed people, including me. Someone who works from home for an English-speaking website not connected to Lithuania. And so if all of this goes through, I guess that will be a huge motivational factor, even if it's more of a negative consequence approach. But going to the topic of internal motivation, I thought I had cracked it by getting the Ling app on my phone, and it was fun and convenient at first, and it was something that I used every day and on my bus rides around the city. But unfortunately, that novelty has worn off. Now I barely open it, ignoring the daily reminder that comes every morning at exactly 7.19. Finding free, engaging, and entertaining Lithuanian multimedia with subtitles has also been a challenge. I found a mini documentary on YouTube about Chebureki vendors with English subtitles, and this was quite interesting. Then, an amazing, loyal supporter of the channel also sent me the Simpsons movie with Lithuanian dubbing and English subtitles. In both cases, however, I'm realizing that it's quite fast for me to pick things up and hear distinct words. But I think these opportunities of immersion are good nonetheless, and they could be more valuable resources in the future as my comprehension improves. There were a few other things I tried too. Another fan of my YouTube channel shared a Lithuanian language channel called Spoken Lithuanian. These are little language lessons created by this guy who I think is named 
Algirdas. What I really enjoy about his videos are his slow pacing, the simple text layout, and the coloring of the words. And this helps me understand sentence structure and how it might be similar or different to English. As I'm creating this video, Al Girdas hasn't posted for like a month, so I do hope he hasn't stopped making videos. I've definitely learned quite a bit from this channel, so I would recommend checking it out if you're also on the journey of learning Lithuanian. More recently, I jumped at the chance to take free Lithuanian classes that were being offered by an organization called Speak. Free classes twice per week for like five weeks? Sounds like a great opportunity, right? <sighs> Honestly guys, it was a disaster. It consisted of a volunteer reading PowerPoint slides word for word, essentially saying this word means this, and then this word means this, and on and on in the same format. Essentially, it's about the same as having someone read directly out of a language dictionary. There was no explanation about grammar or rules, or how the ending might change with all the different declensions. The first class had 12 people attend, and then the next class it was me and 6 people, and then I just didn't bother showing up for the third one. With my mostly negative rant out of the way, I am very, very grateful that Speak organizes free lessons. And before taking this class, I was sure to donate to the organization to help with their administrative costs. But sadly, it just seemed like the volunteer who was assigned this class didn't have the experience to properly teach. But I guess one thing I did learn through signing up for these lessons is realizing the value of an in-person classroom experience. It's much more engaging, and if it includes opportunities to practice with others and review as a class, then maybe I will learn more. That's the hope, at least. Ultimately, with this in mind, it's a reminder that learning a language is hard work, and it's a marathon and not a sprint. I think I've come to terms with the fact that learning Lithuanian quickly will cost money and a lot of money, at least at the beginning. And so I'm pleased and nervous and excited to announce that I've signed up for a two-week intensive course with Vilnius University. It's every weekday for two weeks and includes some cultural experiences too. A friend took a Vilnius University course and warned me to complete the placement test honestly. He felt compelled to check some of his answers with a translator and said that the result was that he was placed in a class that was too advanced for his actual level. And so I was sure to take his advice and skip any questions where I was not 100% certain, instead of guessing and hoping to be right. And, well, there were quite a few of those. Other than all of that, what can I say about the current state of my Lithuanian language journey? Well, I can say that I know a lot more than I did a few months ago, even if it's not the huge dramatic progress that I would obviously want. I can say that I attempt to speak Lithuanian at all my shop, cafe, and restaurant encounters. Getting a gift for my wife at the store, I began in Lithuanian, and then the guy immediately responded with, we can speak English if you want. And honestly, with the complexity of what I wanted, I was grateful for the opportunity. But I also hope that he at least appreciated my initial effort. And at the coffee shop, there always seems to be an issue that prevents me from completing a full transaction in Lithuanian. One day, the sandwich that I had requested wasn't available. And then the week after, the cashier asked me in Lithuanian what flavor of lemonade I wanted. But because the shop didn't bother to list these flavors anywhere, I had to pull the eject button and switch to English just to ask what options were available. I'll remember from now on that the word kokyo is what I should have responded with. Other than that, pronunciation of unfamiliar words is still a hilarious challenge. Because I always get it wrong, no matter what. If I go with my natural instinct, it's wrong. Then in another situation, if I go against my instinct, I still get it wrong. Because of this, I decided to film some real life examples of me taking a guess and then have my wife telling me how my guesses were wrong. What does pariga mean? It's pariga. Is it lietuviškai patiekali? Patiekali. Is it kebabine? Kebabine. So is it algalans? Algalans. And so there you have it. Learning a language takes time, energy, and in some cases, if you don't have that motivation to learn on your own, it might require money. Before signing up for the Vilnius University lessons, which are themselves a few hundred euros, 
I had already spent over 300 euros on private lessons and the app. I feel like by the time I get to some basic level of fluency, it will be close to 2,000. Hopefully not more. So, if you're wondering what the YouTube ad revenue and Patreon money from this channel goes to, this is it. I hope you'll agree with me that it's a worthwhile cause. I am always appreciative of the advice and encouragement all of you Lithuanian viewers offer, so I hope you'll continue in that tone and spirit in the comments down below. I have to say, the advice from many of you about focusing on vocabulary building has actually been very helpful. And so on that note, the Lithuanian word of the day today will be pamoka, which means a lesson. Pamoka. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.